What's up guys, it's the new sensation, Big Annotation here, and today I'm going to be doing a bit of a deep dive into the Blue Bojack deck, um, because it's one of the most complicated decks that I've played in Dragon Ball Super, and it's also one of the most rewarding decks that I've ever played, so I want to make sure that I can give you guys that kickstart for anyone looking to pick up the deck, uh, so that you can get straight into reaping the rewards of your work just from watching these few videos. So this should be the start of a mini series that I'll be doing where I'll be covering all of the intricacies of Blue Bojack. Um, and so some of the later videos that I'm hopefully going to be doing will be breaking down certain matchups, specifically ones that I faced in the UK Fest events, and trying to explain how to best exploit uh, Blue Bojack's strengths and weaknesses in each of those matchups. Um, and for those that don't know, the reason I'm doing this is because of the recent success that I had with Blue Burjack. So in the Leeds Fest, I was able to finish uh, first place in Swiss. And then I was knocked out in top eight, so I ended somewhere between fourth and eighth because they didn't really differentiate between them. Um, and then in the Cardiff UK Fest, I again ended first place in Swiss. Uh, but this time I managed to take it all the way home and ended up finishing first place after Top Cut as well. So I managed to win the whole event with Blue Burjack, which was really rewarding. I've wanted to put this deck on the map for a really long time because I think it's extremely underrated. And I honestly think that it's the strongest blue deck in the game currently. So I want to make sure that I can break down how to play this deck for those that don't know. And we'll get straight into it, just with a little bit of a coverage of why is the deck so good for this specific meta. Um, for those that maybe haven't been watching me for a very long time, you might not know, but I've uh, been playing Blue Bojack since its release. Um, and I've always had really big faith in the deck, but I knew that there were certain metas where it wasn't so strong, and I haven't really brought it to any tournaments before this. Um, Firstly, because I wasn't a huge fan of the webcam tournaments. I have taken part in a few of them, but not all of them. Um, and secondly, because the format just didn't feel right for Blue Bojack in certain situations. And it felt like there were stronger decks that could just outpace it or outgrind it. Um, but for this current meta, I think that Blue Bojack is in an extremely good spot. And that's for a couple of reasons, which you can see on the screen right now. Um, but the first one is the recent ban of the Cell Surge leader. So as we all know, Cell Surge was an extremely overbearing deck in the meta recently. Um, and hand control in general is just not a great matchup for Blue Bojack. Um, and Cell Surge was extremely efficient at what it did, which was hand control. Um, this kind of ties in with the Cell Surge ban, but uh, I also want to mention that the prominence of aggro in this format a lot, especially like most of the red decks like U7 Goku and King Piccolo, but also decks like Gogeta Zeno and sort of Trunk Zeno, I guess that's a little bit more mid-range, but it abuses the thwarting package. Um, so any sort of aggro decks. This, de this meta is very much an aggressive meta, and that's also helpful for Blue Bojack because it's pushing these hand control green decks out of the meta, uh, even the ones that weren't banned like the Cell Surge leader was. Um, but decks like OG Broly and the Starter Deck Broly that we saw at the World Championships aren't really able to compete as well because green just lacks the defense that a lot of other colors have. And so these aggro decks are really good at pushing these uh, hand control decks out of the format and that's really good for Blue Bojack because not only is hand control a poor matchup, but uh, there's the SS Bardock Paternal Unison, which completely shuts the deck down um, because every turn you can just kill a card from your opponent's combo area and that renders the Blue Bojack Leader's Activate Battle completely redundant because you're then not able to play anything that you've comboed with. So unless you're comboing with Zangiers, you're not getting any value out of your Activate Battle. So it just feels worse than a standard draw one. And so... It's really good for Blue Bojack that there's so much aggro in the meta right now because playing against hand control decks that can also abuse the Paternal Unison it feels like completely unplayable at times. And it's really nice for Blue Bojack that that's not a thing in the meta right now. Um, the next thing I want to talk about, which is a much more recent change, is the Arata 2 full power freeze 100% overdrive. 
Um, so this effectively killed the Android 18 mill deck, uh, which while it was a creative deck, it was also an extremely uninteractive one with abusing this freezer along with the baby golden Avenger. Um, uh, this matchup was extremely unwinnable for Blue Burjack, uh, even more unwinnable than I'd say hand control was. Um, just because of the um, the speed that this deck could mill you out, like it could mill you out at turn 4 or 5, and Blue Burjack just cannot keep up with that. That's around the time where Blue Burjack begins to stabilize, and so you're not really able to make the aggressive pushes that can take out the Android 18 mill deck early enough for before they're able to mill you out. And Blue Bojack in general does struggle against mill decks because it goes through its deck very quickly. Uh, but it's also important to run 50 cards in Blue Bojack because you want to be seeing your Bojack pieces as consistently as possible. Uh, and so that, in combined with the speed that this deck could mill you out at, just made the matchup completely unwinnable. Um, because most mill decks, they take quite a while to mill you out, and so Blue Bojack has a very good chance against them because you're able to aggress. Uh, and set up and have like time to set up and stuff but against android 18 mil it's just not it like you you, you can't really win that matchup consistently uh, and then the last hit that i want to talk about is the fu shrouded ban um, this was a, an extremely helpful card in blue burjack because it gave you a consistent alternative win condition to android 17 uh, because it tied together the fact that it could come down a turn earlier but it could also uh, blanket skills on the opponent's board as well as cards in the opponent's hand um, which is especially useful for decks like the yellow trunks deck or yellow sin which have a lot of blockers or any sort of autos that might trigger when you play cards or attack so Fu Shrouded is of course extremely helpful in that regard for blue bojack but it's also a kind of a hindrance to blue bojack when it was in the game because blue bojack is a control deck uh, Blue Burjack outvalues most of the control decks that are in the game. Um, and so the way that control decks would reliably kill you uh, when they realized that they couldn't outvalue you anymore uh, was by dropping Fu Shrouded along with a couple of swings and just trying to push through your defenses that way. Because Fu Shrouded, of course, turns off all of the removal that you have during your opponent's turn and all of your super combos and your galactic busters and everything. And so this was just like a consistent way to get through Blue Bojack's defenses. And especially it being a blue deck that doesn't run God Ceiling, it doesn't really have an answer to this card. So whilst it was a very helpful card in the in the archetype, um, I'm very happy that it's gone because it means that the deck kind of one-ups other control decks again. And so it's in a very nice spot. So I also want to cover its uh, strengths and weaknesses. So to go over its strengths first, Blue Bojack, as I've said, it outvalues pretty much any control deck in the game. Um, other than, I think, Wish Samasu, I feel like I've, I feel like Blue Bojack can just outvalue any control deck that there is. Um, like playing playing against a deck like Soul Striker is one of the funnest things that you can do with Blue Bojack, because there's very little way that they can push through your defenses, and you're just able to accumulate such a huge advantage on them um, that it becomes a bit ridiculous. And then the other advantage that Blue Bojack has is it also does really well into low to the ground aggro decks. Uh, and so I've got the red Pilaf leader here to represent that because as we all know, Pilaf is the best aggro deck in the game right now. And just because of the, the sheer removal that you have during your opponent's turn, all of the interaction that you have, uh, once you get to turn four, Boo Unison just shuts off most of the aggro decks in the game, uh, or at least helps you stabilize very consistently. And then all of the removal that you have during your opponent's turn, and then just the simple fact that you can buff your leader by 5k every turn with the activate battle skill is extremely helpful because it means that on your awakened side you're able to go to a 20k on certain swings so you can stop people from swinging 15k into you. Um, and it also forces some people to aggressively combo into you so that they can push damage more consistently because then they can play around the activate battle and then they're leaking card advantage. So those are the main advantages of playing Blue Bojack is it does extremely well into control and extremely well into aggro. Um, the weaknesses of Blue Bojack, I would argue, as I've already mentioned, Mill is a really, really uh, tricky matchup for Blue Bojack because it goes through its deck really quickly. Um, and it does that by not only just naturally drawing cards every single turn, it uses Boo Unison to draw and it uses Zangia to draw, but it also naturally draws every turn like every deck does. Um, 
but with the leader's activate battle because you're flipping a card from the top of your deck into your energy every time you use it and you're most of the time using it once during your turn and then once during your opponent's turn you're losing two cards in deck every single time or every single turn effectively uh, just off of your leader alone whereas most decks would just lose one card in deck because they go attack draw a card pass and that would be it um, so Blue Bojack definitely goes through its deck extremely quickly, and it has to do that to build a board presence consistently. So Mill can be a little bit of a tricky matchup, but it does, now that Android 18 Mill is gone, you do have a bit of time to set up as well, uh, and you're able to pressure with crits and double strikers, so that definitely helps with the matchup a lot. Uh, and then the final weakness that I would argue, uh, and I've got Gogeta here to represent it because I think it's the biggest uh, representative of this kind of class of card are big cheap battle cards uh, especially ones with keywords like crit or double strike and especially ones that also add removal on top of that so the main offenders that i can think of um, for this current metagame are the obvious goji to thwarting the dark empire which you can see up, th up somewhere i don't know where i'm pointing anymore um but the Gogeta Thwarting is, of course, a really big offender in all of these cases because it's a 25k double strike that comes out for one. So it can pressure you super hard and then it can also remove your board. Uh, and then the other two main offenders I can think of this are the U7 Vegeta, the four drop that comes out for two energy, and then minuses two battle cards by, I think, 20k or 15k. Uh, and Again, in the U7 deck, the 8-drop Goku, their big boss monster that isn't their secret rare. Um, and the reason that these cards are so tricky for Blue Bojack to deal with is it means that the 5k combo that you get on your Activate Battle won't be able to get you out of these swings because the swings are too big. Uh, and then because they're double strike or crit on top of that, it means that you desperately want to be defending these swings because they put on so much pressure onto you if it was just a 25k single striker you could just take it most of the time even if you're on three or two life you can just take that um but because of the fact that it's double strike or crit uh it makes it extremely tricky for you to warrant being able to take it uh, and then the removal that it adds on top is really frustrating because blue burjack builds a board during your opponent's turn and a lot of playing blue burjack is gauging when to put your guys onto the board and when not to and so if they drop a card like gogeta thwarting once you've already established a board during their turn uh, you're not only going to have to take a 25k double strike to the face but you're also going to start losing your board over time which is really frustrating to deal with so those are just some things to note when it comes to playing blue burjack is these are some of the things that you're weaker to um, and then i also want to cover how do you have so many cards so I've experienced this I've experienced this a lot when playing Blue Bojack, where I count out the cards in my hand because my opponents asked how many I have in hand, and I have about 13 or 14 cards, and then they keep on asking me every so every uh, every other turn, and I still have 13 or 14 cards. Um, and they keep asking, how do you have so many cards in hand? So the reason for this, uh, it's not because the deck draws a lot. I want to definitely preface that first. Blue Burjack, I would argue, does not draw a huge amount of cards. Um, the main draw power that the deck has are its one drops. The Boo Unison is the main offender of the draw power because it gives you a draw every single turn, and the Zangyas. Um, but because your leader doesn't draw any cards, um, you don't have any consistent draw power, and so these are the three real cards that actually draw you cards. Um, so the deck just doesn't really draw all that much. However, what the deck does do is it defends the cards in its hand really easily. Um, and what I mean by that is because of the free combo that you get every single turn, uh, you're able to defend 10k swings on your front side and 15k swings on your back side, uh, where you would normally have to combo a card from your hand, right? And so then you'd lose a card from your hand. Um, whereas in Blue Burjack, you're not losing a card from hand, you're losing a card from your energy and then replacing it. So what this means for the deck is it means that against those early pushes and even later on in the game when people are trying to push you down to kill you, um, it means that you're losing one less card in hand every time you want to combo out of a swing once per turn. And that's really advantageous for the deck and that's how the deck can protect so many cards in its hand. It can just keep naturally drawing one per turn, two per turn, um, and then it never has to use the cards in its hand. 
And then on top of that, because all of the battle cards are playing themselves after their play after they're comboed with from energy or hand, you're also building your board off of your leader's activate battle. So not only are you defending yourself, but you're aggressing as well. So you're able to do those two um, very pivotal things in the game just off of your one leader's activate battle every single turn. And so that means that you never have to spend cards in your hand when you're defending yourself because you can either just take the life or you can combo with activate battle. But it also means you never have to spend cards in your hand when you're building a board. So you can just keep sitting there and accumulating advantage uh, and then every time you charge a card into your energy that's still in your hand effectively because you're then able to use that card to defend yourself and then aggress by playing the battle card after it's been used in the combo. Uh, there are of course times where you have to use the cards in your hand like you have to super combo and save yourself from those bigger swings but I hope hopefully you understand the point that I'm trying to get across is that it can just protect its hand really really efficiently especially in the earlier stages of the game where you're able to take life freely um, and that's how you're able to accumulate advantage in the deck and it's really important to understand that because it means that once you understand that you know not to burn through your hand uh, like crazy because you just think you'll draw it all back up because you won't uh, once you start having to combo out of those big swings that's when you have to start thinking about killing the opponent or once you and if you're comboing aggressively um, that's often a mistake unless you're then developing your board and removing more cards further but it's very important to understand when you have to combo aggressively and try and kill your opponent and when you notice that your hand is getting a bit small when you're defending so i'm not going to be able to defend myself next turn and i need to kill them now uh, understanding those concepts is really really important for blue bojack because it doesn't draw as much as people think it does uh, and the next thing I want to talk about in Blue Bojack, this is much more of a simple concept uh, to grasp, I think, is just sinking energy. So when the Blue Bojack leader combos a card from energy, it flips the top card of its deck uh, into the energy in rest mode. But it doesn't require the energy that you combo with to be in any sort of state. It can be in active or it can be in rest. And so it's very important to be able to utilize that energy uh, before you combo with it just to make the most of your energy to get the most tempo during any given turn. And the most efficient way to do that is by using these one drops, which is why I'm running six one drops in the deck, four of the Gokua and two of the Bido, um, because playing them is a way to sync your energy because you can then play your one drop uh, and then tap the energy that you want to use for either your turn or your opponent's next turn. And then when you combo that energy off, you don't lose any energy in the process. Um, and then the reason that I'm running specifically for Gokua over the 2 Bido is because it's always uh, good to use the Gokua's Activate Battle, whereas for the Bido's Activate Battle, it's not always a good, uh, a good idea. And the reason behind that is the Gokua can pay one energy to make himself 15k crit, whereas the Bido can pay one energy to make itself 15k double strike. Um, because you're playing a control deck you don't want to necessarily give your opponent cards in their hand especially in the early game if you're against an aggressive deck but even against another control deck you don't want to be giving them their cards in hand you want to make sure that you can get as much value out as you can and so swinging the goku into the leader is always going to feel like a good play um, and then you're because you're then able to effectively take a card out of their hand with the crit whereas swinging Bido into their leader doesn't is not always the best idea because you're then giving them two more cards in hand and unless you're able to keep pressuring them on top of that you're just giving them two cards in hand for free effectively and so using these activate battles of course is another way to energy sync because you're paying one each time you activate the activate battle skill uh, so the reason i've got the four goku over the four bido uh, and i've got only two bido in the deck is because after you've played the one drop and sunk your one energy into that play, going into the next turn, you can then sink your first energy into the activate battle skill and you can do it much more consistently and effectively with the Gokua than you can the Bido because the Bido is only really useful against those early unisons that come down where you need the double strike to cleave through two markers. Whereas Gokua, you can always just swing it at a leader, use one energy to give it crit and then you've taken a card out your opponent's hand. Um, so that's pretty much the reasoning behind those ratios, as well as 
learning to understand how to sink energy. And the reason I've got Boo on this slide as well is because there are times, once it gets to the later stages of the game, uh, where you'll have Boo on the board. And because Boo untaps one at the end of the turn, it means you basically want to start by using two energy in the turn and then just passing turn. So each turn you want to then use two energy rather than just the one, uh, so that you have your energy in rest mode going into your opponent's next turn to then use the activate battle skill on the card in your energy and rest mode. Uh, you can also achieve this by leaving all of your energy open going into the opponent's next turn if you don't have Boo, or by leaving just one energy tapped so that all of your energy then gets open when you have Boo. Um, you can achieve the same thing if you then combo cards from your hand to play and then combo cards from your energy. Uh, because the cards from your hand can then rest the cards in your energy that you want to play. So that's often nice to do against more aggressive decks where you need to remove multiple things in a turn. Uh, and that's why the Realm of the Gods extra is so good in this deck, because you can then um, use the Realm of the Gods card and then in the same combo step, combo with the card you rested for the Realm of the Gods card. Uh, whereas if you just combo with a card to play from hand, you can't then combo with the card you want to combo with from energy because the card you comboed from hand uh, is going to tap the card from energy at the end of the combo step so you won't then have the opportunity to combo with it in rest mode if that makes sense. Uh, a really big point I want to drive home when playing Blue Bojack is greed is good. Um, and what I mean by this, and this is the main reason why you run uh, four Galactic Buster and especially four of the Xeno Super Combo. So when playing Blue Bojack, a really important thing to understand, and especially this is why understanding matchups with the deck is super important, um, is you're completely reliant on your opponent attacking you. And so that can be really good for you because it means in those aggressive matchups, or even in the control matchups where your opponent just needs to attack you with their leader to draw a card, it means that you can get huge amounts of value off of your uh, off of your activate battle during both your turn and your opponent's turn, and so that can generate a lot of value. But the issue comes with you don't want to be using your uh, activate battle too early in the turn because that could lead to your opponent removing the card that you brought in and then you are not able to build a board as easily, but it can also lead to your opponent then just being able to pressure you that extra amount because you've burnt all of your removal too early in the turn and then they're able to take you down to really low life or even kill you. But then if you hold your activate battle for too long in the turn, your opponent can realize, oh, if, he, if I attack him with this one extra card, yes, I'll potentially be able to push a damage, but the this Blue Bojack player will, uh, will also be able to build up a board going into his next turn. So there are lots of times when playing Blue Bojack where I've had opponents just pass turn to me, uh, even though they had like one or two attacks left that they could have swung with, and that's meant that I then can't build a board because I've held my resources for too long. I'm just left without a board going into another turn where I have to hopefully defend myself and build a rebuild a board. And so it's really important to understand that concept when playing Blue Bojack. And that is the reason why Galactic Buster and Zeno are the two of the best cards in the deck. And they feel super, super amazing. Um, and the reason for that is they both allow you to play when tapped out. So this means that when you're defending yourself, um, you can burn your leader's activate battle a little bit earlier than you might normally in the matchup. Just to guaranteed to establish the board and remove something. And often this activate battle will tap you out for the turn, um, especially in the earlier stages of the game. But then if you have these cards in your hand, the Galactic Buster or the Xeno Super Combo, um, and they're both live, or one of whichever one you have in your hand is live, it then allows you to, if your opponent keeps pressuring you and keeps pushing, you can punish them for that even further and just uh, either use Xeno to replace a card in your energy to get that untap and then combo with the card you with a card from hand to make use of the energy or you can use galactic buster which is effectively like a like an extra version of your leaders activate battle except it also gives you an energy as well um, so it's really important to not only understand that concept in when playing blue bojack but then abuse it and abuse these two cards because they are extremely potent in the deck they are i would argue some of the best carries in the deck because they just allow you to play super greedy 
uh, and build your own board without really respecting what your opponent can do in the turn uh, because you have these two cards to fall back on if your opponent is able to pressure you hard enough. Uh, something else I really want to cover in this video is the importance of one-offs. Me personally, I love having one-offs in any sort of deck uh, and there's a really good reason for that. Um, and when I was originally when I was originally testing and trying to refine my Blue Bojack deck for these fest events, I started out with 10 one-offs in total in my deck. Uh, and I was like slowly trying to cut them down to figure out which ones I wanted and which ones I didn't. But even when I just had 10 one-offs, it felt like a really, really solid deck. And the reason for that is what I'm about to get into. And it's also the reason specifically why I'm running the Gotenks Unison over the fourth copy of the Boo Unison. And so there's this idea of diminishing returns, which I'm sure that a lot of people probably use it, but there might not be so many people who actually know why they use it uh, or do it like specifically consciously. And the idea of diminishing returns is that once you have something, the later occurrences of that same thing are less valuable than the first occurrence. And so this can be applied to card games in the sense that once you have one copy of a card in your hand, say I have one Boo Unison in my hand, if I draw another Boo Unison, the second Boo Unison is going to be less valuable than the first Boo Unison because I already have a Boo Unison. I can, I'm can, i guaranteed to have a turn four play uh, and so the second Boo Unison is only going to be useful if they kill the first one, right? And this is the reason why oftentimes if you have multiple copies of a card in your hand, you're going to charge one of those because you don't need multiple copies of it. You only need the one or two. Um, and this idea applies very heavily to Blue Bojack because it can use its energy as a toolbox as well as the cards in its hand. And this not only applies to the Blue Bojack Brigade uh, cards because you can use your Activate Battle skill on your leader or your Galactic Buster to play them as if they were in your hand, but it also applies to the non-Bojack Brigades that you flip into your energy off your leader's effect. Uh, and the reason for that is because of the Zeno Super Combo. So you can use your Zeno Super Combo to look at your energy and think, this card is good in this matchup, so I'm going to grab it. Whereas this card is not good in this matchup, so I'm not going to grab it. And that's why there are so many one-offs in my build of the deck. Uh, there aren't so many anymore, but there are still, I think, about five or six, which is a solid number. Um, because each of them are good in each of each of their own specific matchups. And so even if I flip them into energy or I draw them, um, I can just add them straight back to my hand with the Zeno Super Combo if they're good in the matchup that I'm playing against. Um, and the reason why I'm running the Gotenks Unison over the fourth Boo is to um, try and reduce the diminishing returns on Boo Unison because it has a, a huge diminishing returns because of the fact that you can only have one Unison out at a time. And so if I have a handful of four Boo Unisons, I'm only going to ever need to play one of them uh, until that copy dies and then I need to play another. And it's very unlikely your opponent gets through three of your boo, unis boo unisons in a game. But the reason I have the Gotenks unison in is it's still good to have the extra four cost unison just to um, allow you access to your leader's awaken on turn four consistently enough. But it also means when I have the boo unison in play already or in my hand already and I draw the Gotenks unison, it's better than having another boo unison because of the fact that especially against yellow, it's a really, really strong card because not only can it get through cards with barrier, it's also a 20k dual attacking unison, so it gets under a post. So a lot of the time what you can do against yellow is you swing with a battle card first, uh, they repost you, and then you swing with your boo unison already on the board, and then when you get to that point where you really need to apply pressure onto them, you can tap four for the Gotenks unison, use either the minus two or the minus three, depending on the situation, and then you get two more 20k attacks without having to tap anything for repost. And that's the main reason why the Gotenks is in here, just for the uh, yellow matchup, but it also just gives giving you that instant uh, effect where Boo Unison wouldn't necessarily give you the instant plus is really nice. Like, so even with the Gotenks is minus two, it draws you two cards. Boo Unison can give you that same amount of value, but it will take a longer time because it will take, it will be over the course of two turns rather than just the one turn that you play it. And so Gotenks can give you that extra burst of value that you might need in a specific matchup when you're especially behind, uh, or it can give you that burst of pressure. And it's especially important just 
to run that one copy over the fourth copy of the Boo Unison because a lot of the time you're seeing your Boo Unison by turn four anyway and it doesn't necessarily matter that you don't see the uh, fourth copy. And so the Gotenks is just better in those scenarios where you double draw, where you would normally double draw a Boo Unison, you draw a Boo Unison and a Gotenks and it's just better. Um, something else I want to cover to start rounding off the video is misconceptions surrounding Burjack. And the main one is that it plays like a generic blue deck, like Soul Striker, like SS4 Ramp, like any of those slower blue decks, um, where it runs cards like Dimension Magic and it runs God Ceiling. And Blue Burjack does not run either of those cards. Those cards are weak, in my opinion, to run in Blue Burjack. And I'll explain why for each of them. So to start off with D-Magic, um, first of all, the untap 2, you don't need it in the deck. Uh, you already have your leaders untap 4, you have Xeno Super Combo, and you have Galactic Buster. Uh, and a lot of the time, you're passing turn on a lot of open energy because you can play during your opponent's turn, so you can play reactively rather than proactively. Just let your opponent play their cards and then react to that and remove their board once they've played it. Uh, and you also have Boo Unison to give you an extra energy every turn as well. Um, and so the untap on D-Magic isn't really that relevant. So the only other two relevant, relevant parts of D-Magic are the Sparking 5 effect and the fact that it's a one cost negate. Um, so we'll cover the one cost negate part first, but the reason why the one cost negate doesn't warrant it being played in the deck is because there are better other one cost negates for the deck. So the reason why I'm running cards like Bujin or the copy of All Too Easy over this card is because they're, they have more flexibility than Dimension Magic because when you use your leader's auto to untap four, you're locked out of counter skills from your hand for the turn. And so you can't then use the D magic in your hand. However, with the Bujin negate, you can use that card from your energy, which not only means that you can charge it into your energy and effectively go plus one because you then don't have to charge. You don't lose a card from your hand in doing that because it's still effectively in your hand. Um, but you can also use the negate from your energy still, even under your leader's auto. Uh, and the same with Auto Easy, you can uh, not only can you discard it for your leader's auto and effectively still not lose a card in your hand because it has the same purpose in the drop area than it does in your hand, but then you can still use the card under your leader's auto. Uh, and then the only other situation where D Magic would be good is the Sparking 5 effect, and the main utility of that is, of course, to protect your unison because if they're attacking your leader you take the damage anyway so the sparking five is not so relevant in that scenario uh, but in the scenario where they're attacking your unison which happens a lot when playing blue bojack turn four they just start swinging at boo instead of your leader uh, chilled's army is just the better negate there's no question about it um, you could argue it's a bit more situational that you're at five or less life but five or less life is a break point you want to get to anyway because that's when your super combo is alive so you're often proactively taking life down to five to get your super combos live. Uh, and especially by turn four, you should be at five life. If not, then you're in a really good spot anyway, so you don't need to complain. And so the Chilled's army, not only does it stop two attacks on your unison, where D-Magic would only stop the one, but it also, with the blocker, it forces a combat step, which you don't otherwise get on your unison, uh, which then allows you to further develop your board, even though your opponent's trying to attack your unison. So it stops two attacks on the unison and it lets you combo in more stuff, making use of your leader's activate battle even when they're trying to kill your unison and then being able to remove their board so adding even further defense to your unison. So if you're if you're able to remove their board with the cards you combo in on top of the shields, you're effectively blocking three attacks on your unison with the shields whereas D-Magic would only block the one. And then you wouldn't be able to do anything with the two energy anyway, because they just kill your unison. You can't combo on a unison swing, so you can't use the two energy uh, unless you're using another negate, which in which case you should have just used the first negate first anyway. Uh, and then the final card is God Sealing. So as I've already mentioned, the leader's auto, of course, locks you out of God Sealing once you've used the auto. Um, the other reason why I'm not running God Sealing is because your unison comes down on turn four, and by that point, you're effectively stabilized already. Boo Unison pretty much sets you straight for stabilization. Um, but also any of the big threats that they might be playing um, during their turn 
the main ones are going to be like the 8 drop Goku in the U7 deck or anything similar to that. Most of those in this current state have deflect and so God Ceiling doesn't really do anything against them and where where God Ceiling would do something against them Boo minus one just does the same thing and so you then remove the cards and it doesn't matter in the first place. Uh, but with the boo minus one you're not then losing a card from your hand as well and like i mentioned earlier bojack doesn't draw very many cards so it needs to conserve the cards it has very efficiently and so god ceiling just doesn't really add up to that game plan and the final reason which is a bit more niche but it definitely comes up is you can just bait people into thinking you have god ceiling and I'll expand on this more when I get into my matchup breakdown, but there are a lot of times against decks like Sin Shenron where I've defended my unison with two markers on in the hopes that going into their turn six, they just think that I have a god ceiling and don't tap the six for their, for their leader effect because everything will go back to their hand and I can just kill them the next turn. So baiting people into thinking you have god ceiling, especially whilst the deck is lesser known and whilst people are less experienced playing against the deck is a really um, helpful way to play around the fact that you don't run god ceiling in the deck anyway and the final point i want to cover is the kind of supposed decks counters um, these are what i found to be most of the cards that people side in against me when i play blue bojack and i'm just going to cover them each individually so the dark power black marseillean to start off with it's not good against Blue Bojack, I'll just put it out there. People assume it is, but the only there are only uh, the Beedo, the Evildoer, and um, the AOD Bojack that come in and get hit by the Dark Power Black Marseille. All of the rest of the Bojack Brigades are 20k or higher. Uh, and on top of that, the Archetype has a built-in answer to Dark Power Black Marseille, which I run 4 of in my deck, and I think should be a 4 of in Bojack decks. Uh, which is the three drop Gokua, which comes in for one energy is 20k and it removes a one drop so even if you're having trouble because you want to establish your Bido or your aod bojack onto the board you can just use Gokua to remove it first and then play whatever card was uh being locked out from the dark power black marseille east kai is actually a really strong card against blue bojack because like i've said many times throughout this video the deck doesn't draw it just preserves its hand really well and so losing those cards in hand can be really impactful um, and this deck also plays a lot during the opponent's turn uh, so this card is actually quite annoying to deal with but like i said before you have your inherent answer you have your gokua uh, and even if you don't draw your gokua you have your four drop bojack so anytime you have the energy to uh, spend for either the gokua or the bojack you just drop that down preferably during your turn to get around the east kai but you can warrant bottom decking just one card for the east kai uh, to make sure that it's cleared off the board um, another card i've seen people side in is just like the generic blue hate cards like all of the borgoses uh, and i know that each color has its own separate one some of them affect like aggressive beans uh, and some of them affect d magic like i've already mentioned d magic is not a card you run in this deck and so the cards that affect D Magic do not do anything against this deck. Um, and the cards that affect aggressive beans can be kind of annoying to deal with. But again, you have your Gokua, you have your you have a lot of removal in this deck, so those cards again don't really do a huge amount. A card that can be slightly more effective is the Vegeta True Fighting Spirit. Now, of course, this is uh, much more limited to Black Saiyan leaders because of the um, the auto being tied to a black saiyan leader but uh the effect to make me warp a card every time you use a non-awakened skill to untap an energy can be quite frustrating because it locks you out of using aggressive and defensive beans however the difference to a lot of blue decks where bojack differs to a lot of blue decks with this is that a lot of the energy untapping you're doing isn't technically untapping it's just replacing energy so with galactic buster you're gaining an energy but you're not untapping it you're uh, moving your energy that you have you're moving your bojack in your energy into the combo area and then moving your galactic buster into your energy area in active mode and the same thing for Zeno, you're not untapping an energy you're just adding a card to your hand and then putting a card into your energy in active mode and so you can very easily play around this Vegeta just by not using Senzu Bean and using these other methods of pseudo untapping that you have. And then also you have another inherent answer 
in Gokua because all of these cards are one drops so Gokua does hit all of them. Um, although the only outlier to this is the next card which is Koitsukai which of course Gokua does not hit because its effect activates in the drop and you're never going to see someone play a Koitsukai are you? Um, Koitsukai is actually a really big issue for this deck and it does a lot of work because like I've just mentioned most of the battle cards are 20k or less. Uh, especially most of the impactful early game ones, like the Bojack the Evil Doer um, and the Goku the Evil Doer, all of that stuff. Um, so Koizukai definitely does a lot against this deck, and it just comes down to a point of knowing when your opponent is gonna go in on you, and being able to set up for that, bearing in mind the Koizukai that they might have in the drop area. Um, oftentimes. The uh, advantage of this is that your opponent's often looking to kill you, even in the aggressive matchups, around turn 4. And so this means a lot of the times if you've gone first, you'll have your Buyunus established, so that's able to stave off a lot of the pressure. Uh, but not only that, you're then able to, on 4 energy, be able to play your 8-drop Bojack as another form of removal and as another form of board development. But it gets around Koitsukai because it's a 30k rather than 20k. So... That's pretty much the way you get around Koitsukai, is just by playing around it and not playing your 20k's into it. There are definitely times where you're forced to play your 20k's into it just to remove a card, uh, and then you have to warp the two and just kind of deal with it. Um, but most of the time you're able to play fairly effectively around it, especially if you have your Boonison already established. But Koitsukai definitely hurts this deck quite a lot, um, and I've lots of people side it in against me and it i think i was koitsukai five times in both cardiff and leeds uh, so that's five times in each event um, and it was a real pain to deal with um, but that's pretty much it for this video um, i hope you guys enjoyed of course it's a bit of a long one because i was looking to go more in depth in the fundamentals of things but hopefully you guys enjoyed it and if you guys made it this far definitely be sure to subscribe and like if you like the video and subscribe for if you want to see more of this kind of thing especially if you're interested in that matchup breakdown that i'm going to be putting out soon um so stay tuned for that if you're interested of course it'll probably be another long video like this but i want to make sure that i get everything covered as well as i can and also I've got a video on Crossworld's TCG channel, so you guys can check that out as well, where I go over the Blue Bojack deck um, and go over some of the core cards and some of the core interactions for how to play the deck as well. So definitely check that out. Um, but other than that, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.